Welcome back to Hannity. We continue now with the author of Crippled America, How to Make America Great Again, 2016 Republican presidential frontrunner, candidate Donald Trump. All right, Vladimir Putin, of all people, said the following about you, that Donald Trump's bright, a talented person, without any doubt. He's the absolute leader of the presidential race. He added, he says he will want to reach another deeper level of relations with Russia. What else can we do but welcome it? Certainly, we welcome it. Your reaction? Well, I welcome it. I think it's great. I think that's what should be happening. I mean, his dislike for President Obama, and it's a mutual thing, is uh, terrible. It's, uh, that's why you see all the conflict, all the problems, all the hatred. We should be able to work. If we can't work with Russia, that's not a good thing. And uh, I'm greatly honored by his statement. I think it's terrific. Let me play for you the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson saying that ISIS can infiltrate the refugee population, especially in light of the comments you've made that have been criticized by some. We do have to be concerned about the possibility that a terrorist organization may seek to exploit our, our refugee resettlement process. That is true of this country. That's true of every other country that accepts refugees. Okay, everybody, all our intelligence officials are saying this. You made the statement, we need a temporary moratorium on people coming from Muslim countries. Um, should we have a temporary moratorium period until we can get this figured out? Well, I just don't think we can take, we just can't afford it as a country. Number one, we can't afford it, period, with or without terrorism. And, you know, we can do things and we can help out. And I'm uh, very much for, you know, in Syria doing some kind of a safe zone where we help them with, you know, different things so they can live until that maybe they can go back to where they want to be, which is probably where they just left. But I'm all for that. I think we should have a safe zone. We should have the Gulf states, which are loaded with money, and others help us fund it. We shouldn't be funding very much of anything. But we really, I love helping with the safe zone. We cannot allow them to come in to our country. We can't do it. Forget the cost standpoint. It's expensive. And you're talking about, I don't know if you saw projections over it. You're talking about billions of dollars, which is shocking. But over a 10-year period, you're talking about a lot of money. I mean, you're talking about a lot of money from day one. But beyond that, the tremendous risk that we're taking if these people are ISIS or affiliated with ISIS or somebody else like ISIS, we can't allow it to happen. Yeah, it's scary. When you think of what happened in San Bernardino, when you think of what happened in Paris, when you think back, you were, you were in New York. I was in New York on 9-11, 2001. Let's just shift a little bit to politics. Going into the debate this week, a lot of people thought that there might be some back and forth between you and Senator Ted Cruz. For the most part, you guys have not gone at each other. A little bit maybe in the weekend leading up to this debate. Um, how do you feel about these other candidates? You seem to get along with them when you're together with them. I think I mostly get along. I guess there are a couple that I wouldn't, but I get along. And actually, when we're not on the debate stage, it's like, you know, I get along with everybody. But uh, I, I have a very good relationship with Ted Cruz. And, you know, he's been very nice in that he's backed me almost from the beginning. You know, I've said things, many of which turned out to be right, if not all. You know, I talked about illegal immigration when I made my announcement on June 16th in New York. I made it, you know, the, the announcement, bringing up the importance of stopping illegal immigration and a whole thing and it was a firestorm and ted was the one person really that was with me very much and and others have been good too ben carson's been terrific you know i've had some pretty good support but ted has been there there's no yeah. question about it uh, it seemed to get a little personal with governor bush what do you think of that exchange well, you know, I, I really think he's a nice man, but he's doing poorly. He's doing very poorly. I mean, he was down to three or four or something like that. I just came out with numbers at 41 percent. So he, he's not been doing well. And, you know, his pollster said, look, here's what you do. Here's a line. Memorize it and say it to Trump. And, you know, when they let that whole clip run, he doesn't look so good, according to everybody, virtually everybody that's seen it. But, you know, he came out a couple of times during the debate in the middle of nowhere, and I said, what is that? Is that another attack? I mean, it's just not necessary. It would be really great if the Republican Party could get along, because we could beat Hillary Clinton. I'll tell you what, I know I can beat her. And the Fox poll that you just saw came out a week ago or so, it shows that I beat her. But, you know, we have to beat Hillary Clinton. And it would be nice if we could unify the party. Well, let me ask you that. division in the party. You, let's say you get the nomination. There are a lot of smart people on that stage. A lot of people have some pretty strong records, maybe even people that are out of the race, like Bobby Jindal or Scott Walker. Um, 
Right. Do you think that there are a lot of people there, if you won the nomination, that you would want to tap, maybe Ben Carson, if he didn't win, and you won the nomination, that, that you would want to put in your cabinet? Would you like to put a coalition together? There, in there are. I mean, look, I, I, I know so many people within the party that have talent, that have great talent. And, you know, in all fairness, many of the people on stage, the people that we just left from being on stage, I've got great respect for some of them, not all of them. I think, I think there are a couple that maybe I'm not too fond of. But overall, I have a lot of respect for a lot of the people that I'm competing against right now. And, I mean, it's been an amazing process, and it's been a beautiful process, and I'm leading by a lot. I guess I'm leading by, in one poll, by more than 27 points. That's a lot. Well, it's a lot in a field of 14. There's no doubt about it. Let me ask you this question. So Americans now, we have 77% are less confident that we can prevent a lone wolf attack. Race relations now are at a 20-year low. You see the state of the economy, 94.5 million Americans out of work, 50 million in poverty, 46 million on food stamps, median income is down. Between national security and the economy, if you become president, how quickly do you think you could turn things around? When would people expect or be able to expect that their lives are going to be better, that the country is going to be safer, that our position in the world is going to be different? Sean, I have the greatest business people in the world dying to come and help me out with China and Japan and, frankly, Mexico, both at the border and also, you know, they're taking away a lot of our business, tremendous amounts of business. And, and so many other countries. Figure, I'm mentioning a few. So many. Vietnam, that's another one. That's a hot one right now for taking away business. But I have so many. We're going to bring our jobs back. We're going to strengthen our military. You know, right now, we're not a prepared military. You look at General Ordiano, we're not a prepared military. We're going to take care of our vets. There's so much to do. One of the first things I'm going to do is get rid of the executive order that Obama says, you know, just come on in through our southern border. Now, we've had some pretty good luck in court which is interesting because that's unusual but and they've done a good job on that but I would end that end the court case I will knock out that executive let order me, so fast your head will spin let me ask you this last question um, what th look this process and I've interviewed all the candidates and on a regular basis what drives you to do this who are you thinking about who do you want to help the most in this process in other words who are the well you know go ahead I fully understand. I, I mean, I understand the question, and I get asked the question a lot because I have a great life. I have a great company. I built a great company. I really love this country, and I love the people in the country, maybe now more than ever, because you saw yesterday I was in Arizona, and I had 15,000 people in the hangar in an airplane. It was the only place you could have handle that many people. I mean, the whole, it's amazing, the relationship I've developed over the last six months with the people. We have amazing people, great people in this country and really smart people I want to tell you they get it they don't believe nonsense press or lie because the, the press is very dishonest I want to help this country and you know my theme it says it all make America great again and you know interestingly starting about a week ago I started saying make America great again and safe again because yeah. I don't feel safe and you don't feel safe and nobody feels safe so we're gonna make America great again we're gonna make America safe again we're going to really do a great job. If I get elected, you're going to see things happen that you wouldn't have believed possible. We're going to win again, Sean. This country is in decline, and it's sad to see. The, the American dream that I've had, that you've had, I want that for everybody, and it sounds like you do too. Uh, Mr. Trump. We can turn it around, Sean. Sean, we can turn it around. I'll tell you what, if we're going to go another four years like this, or eight years with a God Hillary forbid. who's horrible, who's terrible, it won't, but I'm telling you, Sean, we can turn it around pretty quickly. All right, Mr. Trump, Merry Christmas if I don't see you before then, and uh, we'll see you in the new year. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas. Thank you.